Okay, guys, we are on to our next video, and we're going to talk about simulation right now. And we use simulation, okay, so to predict probabilities. And we want to simulate a large number of trials so we can use that simulation then to predict a probability, the chances of something happening. So let's go with this first example here. And I will have the blank notes posted on Schoology so you could print this out if you want and do it with me, okay? Simulation is a powerful tool for getting insight into events whose outcomes are random, okay? Your school decided to hold a raffle to defray the cost of tickets to the senior prom. The breakdown of ticket sales was as follows. Students are 650 tickets, faculty are 325 tickets. At an assembly, the principal reached into a jar, drew three winning tickets. To everyone's dismay, all three ticket winners were members of the faculty. The students cried foul. Their argument was that given the breakdown of sales between the two groups, it would be nearly impossible for all three winners to be faculty members. They argued that the ticket stubs had not been properly mixed before the drawing. We can use simulation to, to determine if the outcome of the drawing could be reasonably expected um, to have occurred if the tickets were properly mixed. Okay, before we can actually use simulation, we are going to use random numbers to generate this simulation. And when we use these random numbers, we need to know how to assign random numbers to the events that could happen in this problem. So. We have a student ticket that could happen and faculty that could happen. And we need to assign random digits to faculty members as well as students. So I wanna actually go to the next slide to practice that before we come to this slide. Um, I think this problem will be easier if we do that first, okay? So representing events as numbers. The thing that we wanna think about is we wanna think what proportion of the time will this outcome happen? And that's gonna help us then when we assign numbers okay, to what's going on, to this outcome, okay? So if we're thinking about the outcomes, outcome of a, the outcomes, that's not written very well. Let's just think, we're thinking about a deck of cards, right? And we have these suits. So I could be, you know, have a deck of cards and what, what are the chances that you pull out a certain suit, okay? So if you don't know anything about a deck of cards, there are four suits to a deck of cards, okay? There are hearts, there are spades, there are diamonds, and there are clubs, okay? We want to assign random numbers that will represent what's happening. So what we wanna think is we wanna think, what proportion of the time will that outcome happen? There are 52 cards in a deck. There are 13 hearts. There are 13 spades. There are 13 diamonds. And there are 13 clubs. So what proportion of the time should a certain event outcome happen? So one fourth of the time, right? Let's put in my next slide. One fourth of the time, if I was gonna pull a card out of a deck, I should get a heart over time. One fourth of the time, I should get a spade. One fourth of the time, I should get a diamond. And one fourth of the time, I should get a club. That's the proportion that represents the sample space, everything that could happen. The sample space, everything that could happen if I was gonna pull out a card from a deck of cards, okay? Now, what I wanna do is I want to say now, hey, I want to represent these events as numbers. There's a few ways I could do it. I could choose to use the numbers one, two, three, and four. One would represent a heart, Two would represent a spade, three would represent a diamond, and four would represent a club. But I could also do it a different way. I could use the numbers 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, dot, 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 keep going. I could use 20, I'll keep going, you know, 4, 5, 6, 24, 25, 26, keep going, 27, 28, 29, 49, and I'm doing this as a read. For a reason, so just bear with me. Keep going, right? 74, 75, 76, keep going all the way to 99. Okay, so I have these numbers 0, 0 to 99, and that's a hundred total numbers there. 
right? There are 100 numbers here. And what I could do is I could represent 0, 0 through 24. That could represent a heart. Why? Well, 0, 0 to 24, that represents 25 numbers. Okay, that represents 25 numbers. And 25% of the time, one fourth of the time, if I have a deck of cards, if I you know mix it all up and I pull one card off the top, I should get a heart. 25% of the time, I should get spades. So the next 25 numbers, that's gonna give me 25 to 49. That's gonna represent a spade, okay? That's 25% of the 100 numbers represents the spade. I'm gonna do it again, 50 to 74. That's gonna represent a diamond. And then finally, 75 to 99, that's gonna represent a club. Okay, my point is there are different ways that we can represent events as numbers, but those numbers have to match the proportion of the time the outcome will happen. Let's practice again. The outcome of a traffic light, if they all take place evenly um, with the same likelihood we really should put instead of evenly, if they all had the same likelihood of, take, of happening. So when we think about a traffic light, we have a red, right? We have yellow and we have green. So we're gonna assume it is the same likelihood of getting a red as it is a yellow as it is a green when you're coming up to a stoplight. Well, that would mean then, right, that there's a one third chance of hitting a red light, a one third chance of hitting a yellow light and a one third chance of hitting a green light. So what numbers could I use to represent red, yellow, and green light? I could use a one, a two, and a three. Or I could do this. I could use numbers one through nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now you're probably thinking, why are you doing all this work, Ms. Sopo? Well, you'll see in problems, there are times when you might need to do this. It won't be as easy as just picking one number for each outcome, okay? And we'll show you that in the next problem that we do. Okay, once, okay, so we have our nine numbers up here. I don't have 10 numbers up here and there's a reason. One, two, and three, three, out of nine numbers, that represents one third of the numbers. So these first three numbers, that could represent a red light because a red light will happen one third of the time. One, two, and three is three out of nine numbers. Again, three out of nine is one third. Four, five, and six are three numbers out of nine numbers, and that could represent a yellow light. And again, you'll see why I have to do the, this as well, and I just want to practice it with you. And then we have seven, eight, and nine, okay? These three numbers out of nine, that represents one third as well, and these could represent green. Okay, let's move on. Let's do one more, or two more, excuse me. A basketball shooter has a free throw percentage of 75%. What are the outcomes that could happen, the sample space? What could happen? Well, I could either make the free throw, right? Or I could miss the free throw. Now, remember what I said at the beginning, we wanna think about what proportion of the time will that outcome happen? Well, they told us here that that basketball shooter has a free throw percentage of 75%, which means he makes it 0.75, 75% of the time. And he misses it 25% of the time. So now I can't say that a make is a one and a miss is a two because I have two numbers here. A one as a make would be one out of two numbers, 50%, but I make it 75% of the time. So what I could do is I could say, I'm gonna use the numbers one, two, three, 
and four, right? I know that I make a free throw 75% of the time. So I have four numbers, 75% of that would be three numbers. One, two, and three could be a make. Four, then that's one out of four numbers that would represent a miss. There we go. Now again, we could use the 100 numbers and we could go 00, zero to 74. That would represent a make and 75 to 99, that would represent a miss. Why am I not doing 0, zero 001 to 100? I'm not doing that because if we use a random digit table, 00, zero to 99 guarantees we won't have to throw any numbers out, okay? Let's finish this last one and then we'll stop the video so you guys can take a break. A carnival game has 10 balloons to pop and two winners, okay? So you can imagine that we have this whole board, right, with all these different balloons, and two of the balloons, they have the winning prize. So we either win or we lose. Again, the whole time we want to think, what proportion of the time will that outcome happen? Well, if there's 10 there and two are winners, that probability is 2 out of 10, okay? Okay, and then lose would be eight out of 10. All right, so I wanna use the numbers zero through nine. Again, why would I not use zero, one to 10? Because then if I'm using a random number table to represent, like to simulate things, I'm gonna have to be throwing things out and you'll see that later, okay? So I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Two of the 10 numbers need to represent a win. Eight out of the 10 numbers need to represent a loss. There we go. Again, are there other ways we could do it as well? Yes, I showed you multiple ways up here too, okay? All right, I'm gonna stop the video. You guys need to stand up and stretch. Um, what should we get from this? We're getting ready to use simulation, right, to predict the probability of certain events. But before we can do simulation, we need to know how to represent certain events as numbers. So that's what we should feel good about with this video. Thanks, guys.